Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zentangle Explore. I am so excited to draw a really fun pattern with you today. Really, really slowly. So all you need is a pen, some sort of a pen, a permanent waterproof pen would be great if you want to add watercolor later, and some little pieces of paper. This is watercolor paper, any size that can fit in the palm of your hand it will be fabulous. And we're going to start off with some meditation, just a little bit of breathing and centering, and then we will draw for a nice long time. So get nice and comfortable in your seat. If there's any noise in my background, I'm just going to allow that to be a way to just let it all go. So you can close your eyes if you like. I'm closing mine. Just find your breath. There's an inhale. There's an exhale. Allow any sounds in your environment or mine to just float away on that exhale. Just allow them to be there. It's not necessary to follow them with your mind. Inhale, little stop at the top. And an exhale, little stop at the bottom. Allow that breath to flow through our bodies. Taking away any tension, any muscle that might be holding on. Any thought, any concern, any worry, any furrowing of brow, tenseness of the jaw or the shoulders. Just let it melt away. Allow that inhale, exhale to be your sole focus. It's a simple circle. Oxygen in. Little rest. Carbon dioxide out. Little rest. Oxygen in. Little rest. Carbon dioxide out. Little rest. Beautiful cycle of giving and receiving. Receiving the oxygen, the trees, breathe out for us into the atmosphere, the giving of our carbon dioxide back to the trees, the plants, and the flowers, so they can grow, bloom, brighten our world. Cycle that continues on and on while we're here on Earth. Can tap into at any time. Soothe away any tension or release any thoughts. Nice inhale, little stop. Exhale, little stop. Almost fingers and toes, come back fully into the body. Let's take a big inhale together. A nice sighing exhale. Ah. Nice big inhale together. Sighing exhale. Ah. One last big inhale together. Sighing exhale. Ah. You can open your eyes. Whatever you create today or the rest of your weekend, it'll be will be perfect just as it is. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I find it really helpful to just settle and take a couple breaths before I start drawing. Now, I'm going to switch my view. We'll begin. Oh. 
Okay, so I have a few pieces of paper here and one of them actually has a pencil line on it and I'm just gonna let that be okay. I'm not gonna concern myself with that. You might wanna draw on more than one piece of paper, which is why we have a couple of different sizes. And I have a zero, I have a number of different pens here, thicker pens, finer pens, this is a zero, one micron permanent pen. Um, but you could use a ballpoint pen. You could use a colored pen. You could use just a black pen. Whatever you have will be perfect. As long as you can draw a line, do it really slowly. You are in the right place. And if you can't draw it slowly today, maybe by the end of the class, you will be able to draw it slowly. All right, so let's start off. And we're drawing, this is a miscellaneous pattern. So I don't know who the creator is, but it's really lovely. I hope you enjoy it too. Nice slow line, just in the corner. And start in the corner. The line is so slow that it's wobbling over that, over the texture of the watercolor paper. I'm going to turn my tile. You can turn yours if you'd like, but you can try drawing it from wherever you are. I'm going to draw a little ray. And at the bottom of that ray, it's a little circle. And then there's another ray. And these rays do not have to be, and actually really should not be, the same length. I'll come out in the center of that sun. Well, I've spaced mine out, and I'm going to go back and add in some more rays. I like to draw this. There's many ways to draw every pattern. I like to draw first with a little bit of a some space, just a foundation. This is a very simple pattern. So it's a really excellent opportunity to just go really slowly. So now I have my foundation there. And I could leave it just like that. It's totally perfect just like that. But I'm going to show you what you can do when you go back in. Mm. Because this pattern is so simple, it's a really wonderful opportunity to hold your pen so lightly. I tend to grip my pen. When I'm drawing for a long time, my hand can cramp up and not nice. Do that to your hand. So hand can be super relaxed when we draw. We just send a little breath to it. Give it some conscious attention. So when we're coloring in, we're drawing really simple things like today. It's a wonderful time to just relax that hand, especially when you're drawing slowly. No rush. Just gonna draw this simple pattern. And explore it. Maybe I can see just part of this one on the page. So the idea is that we explore. So one way to explore this pattern would be to move it out of the corner and onto the flat surface of the side. You don't have to explore. You can draw that over and over and over again. You can explore by changing 
direction that I'm drawing my lines. I could explore by changing these little circles to larger circles or dark circles or little hearts or little squares or putting more than one circle. I could change my rays and make them squiggly or with just a tiny loop in one part of it. So many ways to change this pattern. I love drawing simple things and then really playing with it. Answering all those what if questions in my mind. I could leave it just like that, just with half. Continuing to breathe and that inhale and exhale. We learned this process of slow drawing from Amy Miracle over at Mindful Art Studio. And she always recommends breathing out the line. Actually, using the line to inhale out the line and exhale out the line. So another way that we can play with this is I can move it off the edge of the page. And the question is, does it stay as this quarter or half moon? Does it have a back on it? Does it become a solid form or does it just stay like that? I can inhale out the line. And exhale out the next line. Just taking this opportunity to relax whether you're here with me live or on the replay. Falling is such a beautiful, moving meditation. We take away all expectation, all judgment, what should or shouldn't be on the page. Just allow this to be Time to be nice and centered and calm. Nothing happening. Pen and ink on paper. Doesn't really matter what you draw. The key is to be present, what you are drawing. Acknowledging it's quiet time. Just relax your hands. Notice your breath. And play and explore. What would happen if I... And then answer that question. You have a pen. You have a piece of paper. Whatever question comes up, you can answer. What if I drew this with a Sharpie pen? What if I drew it with a big, fat, black magic marker on a huge piece of paper? What if I got out my finger paints?
quiet it. Instead of a quarter or a half moon, it became a full moon. And one that does not have to be a complete circle. What if I overlap my lines? What if I have a kink in my ray? If the ray extends out and then takes a left or a right mid stretch. I wonder if you have giant orbs on the end of your rays instead of just little ones. Just breathing. Relaxing that hand. Allowing whatever's showing up on the page to just be there. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. It's helpful to just let it be there. I'll often draw things. I think, ah, just not sure, I don't think I like it. I just let it be. I look at it the next day and think, wow, there's like something really cool there that I want to explore further. I just scribbled it out or threw it away. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to appreciate it and look at it in a different way. Sometimes we get too close to our work. A create, creative, a creative person that lives inside of us, a creative being, loves everything just because it is. Because this line has never been drawn before and will never be drawn again. A creative being has zero judgment has play as its sole goal, play and exploration and expansion, and love for everything new that's created. And I can tap into that part of myself. I find that I enjoy the process of creating, drawing, learning new things so much more. Part of me that wants to whine and cry and stamp my feet over deadlines and to do's and have to's and musts. And that is just not a very happy way to be. I wonder if these rays share an orb. I love about this class is when I draw a pattern for class that I'm teaching, 
I usually draw it one way, sometimes two ways. Maybe I teach the class multiple times, draw it different time ways, but generally you draw a pattern and then you move on to a new pattern. This is a way to spend time with just one pattern, just one simple example of what can be drawn. It's a really great way to look at all of the opportunities to shift our perspective and look at everything in, in a new way. Somebody might look at this pattern, the first way I drew it, and say, well, that's the only possible way to draw it. In this class, we find out that that is not true. And many, 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 many different ways to draw every pattern, keeping with the essence of the pattern. And then kind of bending the expectations of what that pattern does, can do, or does do, or will do. Like in the same way, as I get stuck in habitual patterns of doing things one way, saying things one way, looking at things one way. And this process shows me that I can change things, simple things, little things. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. And if I do that, I'm brave enough to do that, brave enough to allow myself to do that. I can experience, my experience changes because things are now different. Just by tweaking something small. Change is really the only constant. So the beautiful thing about that is that there's always the opportunity to change and do something new. It's always lovely when that thing that you're doing that's new is unexpected and surprises even you. I never thought I would be able to do whatever it is I am now doing. And I did it. And that is fabulous. One of my students once said they never thought they would be able to sit and draw slowly because they had so much nervous energy. And when they did, found a new practice that they could use to calm down, calm that nervous energy. And they started drawing and just kept drawing. I also love about this practice, it's so accessible. You have a pen, piece of paper, grocery list, a magazine, you have a crossword puzzle, you can draw something.
What if I start out with little round suns all over and build them mechanically? There's a lot of question right now. It's nice about what if questions. It's like a brainstorm every single when you're trying to find solutions to something, every single possible idea is valid. No idea is too crazy, too wild, too off the charts. Every single one is something that you can do with pen and a piece of paper. I'm getting very excited about this idea, so I'm drawing faster. I have to slow my pen down. Nice and slowly. Breathing. Line. Relax the grip on that pen. Slowly, slowly, slowly. As I'm doing this, exploring this what if question, I'm finding that I, it's a little chaotic for me. I prefer to be drawn one of these patterns. It's been skipping all over the place. And that's okay. It's a good thing to realize. And it also is an opportunity for me to slow down really give my attention to each stroke of the pen back into the present moment and recognize that the goal isn't to finish this piece. The goal is to enjoy the process of watching it morph and change with each line. I 
have an art deadline coming up and it's been sending me a little bit of angst and concern. And so an art friend of mine said, why are you, why are you doing this project? Are you doing it because you want to meet a deadline? Are you doing it because you want to challenge yourself to create what you set out to create? It made me think about where I've been focusing my attention. And what I realized is that here I have my artwork in front of me and my attention is all the way out on July 1st, sitting on the calendar, tapping its foot, saying, hello, I'm the deadline. I'm really important. You should be listening to me. Get on it. Create faster. All sorts of other not so nice things that that voice has to say. And so when I saw myself out there, part of me tapping my foot, worried about the deadline, I noticed that my art was nowhere near me. It was sitting back in the present moment, all lonely and abandoned, not because I wasn't working on it, but because my focus was somewhere other than on it. And it's a really great visual, and a really great realization or why I was feeling so much anxiety. I knew that I was driving the anxiety, but I didn't. It's easy to blame the deadline. Well, if the deadline weren't there, if I didn't have this, if I didn't have to go do that, if I didn't have this appointment, blame, blame, blame. In reality, I'm making the choice. I'm choosing at every moment where to put my focus. And this class is a really really beautiful way to practice putting your focus right here on the page in this line in this simple pattern in this simple exploration and when your pen speeds up or your focus goes to wanting to finish the pattern or your focus wants to jump to the next what if question before you're done with the first one you can practice Bringing your attention back, saying, no, this line, this line right here, this is the most important line right now. This is the only line that needs my attention right now. Everything else can wait. I only need to do one thing at a time. And right now, drawing this line is all I need to do. very, 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 very helpful realization to have when my deadline is still days away so that I can enjoy fully the rest of the time that I am creating what I set out to create. Otherwise, I find that when I get to the end, I've repeated this process over and over again, pretty much on every deadline for most of my life. And I'm still working that out. Every deadline is an opportunity to practice and become a little more present and notice how I'm creating my own anxiety. And so now I have the opportunity to Continue to bring myself back to my project. Whenever my attention strays, which I know it will, deadline, deadline, deadline. I can say, nope, I want to be fully present because I know that in the past, when I finished a project, I don't feel satisfied at the end because I missed the whole process because all I could think of during the, the whole part of creation was the deadline. The deadline is not very exciting. It's not at all fun. It's not playful. I want playful and creative and beautiful time spent with my nice relaxed hand, my beautiful exploration thoughts of what if. 
Sometimes what if questions only show up when your mind is quiet? Otherwise your mind just shouts out about them. Boring things like deadlines. And because I slowed myself down and stopped being concerned about jumping all over this pattern, now that I really am enjoying it. It was a simple shift of focus, shift of my attention that made that possible. Slow lines. Be sheeting every single one or what it is. Whether your mind thinks it's perfect or not perfect, it doesn't matter. What it is is exactly what it is. And wanting it to be something else just gives us more anxiety. Anxiety is not where I want to live. So, please be proud. Watching the ink. It sinks into the page. Students will often ask me how to draw more circular circles. The first answer is to practice drawing circles. <laughs> but the second answer, and maybe the more important answer, is to stay present with the circle through its entire evolution, evolution into a circle. You think about the end point, just like the deadline. And use the opportunity to direct our attention to what we're trying to accomplish, which in this case would be draw a circle.
네. 이제 my explorations. You can always add darker colors or actual colors to these to make them pop. Put watercolor behind. Put watercolor just near suns. You could add black to any of these shapes. Lots and lots of different options. Thank you for drawing with me. It's always so fun to draw with you. Either live or on replay. If you'd like to donate to these classes, paypal.me slash eternal possibility. And if you would like to watch more of my work, you can find it on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Esther Peace Check. And um, if you'd like to find Amy Miracle's work, she's at mindfulartstudio.com and she does slow drawing parties free on uh, Wednesdays at noon um, Central Time, one o'clock Eastern Time. Okay, I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely weekend, if it's your weekend. And I will hope to draw with you again sometime. Bye.